All right. Thanks for everybody being here. Uh, we are going to talk about um, electric vehicle charging stations. So again, my name is Eric Smith, and I'm with SemiConnect. We are a Blink charging company now. Uh, more on that in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to talk today about how to elevate business travel with electric vehicle charging. So what we're going to talk about today is that there are different types of EV drivers. Uh, there's different benefits of EV charging for hospitality. I'm going to be talking about the growth uh, and current state of the uh, electric vehicle market today and how our company, SemiConnect, can also help. So I want to mention that there are different types of electric vehicle drivers and travelers. Um, there are group travelers, uh, corporate travelers, and leisure travelers as well. So group, I actually just about 30 minutes to this, uh, prior to this, was speaking with a, uh, a contact at a major, major company in North America talking about how she literally picks hotels that are sustainably in sync and have electric vehicle charging stations. If they don't have it, she says they're not getting the business. I'm not making this up, it was 30 minutes ago. Um, that's your group traveler right there for an example. Um, and she's going through the process of vetting out which companies um, have charging stations for their guests. Uh, there's a corporate traveler, someone who's obviously traveling for meetings, appointments from city to city. Um, and then there's, of course, leisure traveling as well. Um, sometimes the demographic of this person is pretty attractive. They're maybe typically wealthy, maybe tech savvy. Um, they're in looking for something convenient for their charging needs while they're spending the night somewhere and um, sustainably, sustainably minded as well. I've spoken with a few general managers at, hos um, at hotels and hospitality. And a lot of times they say, well, I have this understanding of what an EV owner is. But I want to mention about seven key um, situations that can come up that th some don't think about. So an electric vehicle driver may live in Chicago. That's where they live, but they're traveling to Dallas. They're not going to be in the mindset to want to rent a gas car on their trip. They want to rent an electric vehicle, right? So that's one person, and that's kind of a common thought. You travel, you rent an electric vehicle, there you go. Another situation is that the electric vehicle driver needs a place to charge overnight during a road trip. You know, they are doing the road trip with their electric vehicle. These vehicles do 250, 300 miles, three, you know, 250 to 350 miles of range now. So they need a place to uh, spend the night, put their head down for the night, right? But there's other situations. You might have someone who lives in the area of your property they drive an EV, but they have a friend coming in from out of town. The question is then, well, they meet the friend at your hotel. Do they go out to dinner or do they say, oh, you have charging stations here. Why don't we sit and eat and fill up my car while I'm at it? That's a wonderful way to get some extra revenue, even for somebody who's not spending the night at your property. Someone may be attending a conference like this and say, um, I need to charge up while I'm here for the two hours, eight hours, whatever it is. They're not spending the night, but they're there for a period of time. Um, also, a person may be spending the night for, let's say, three or four nights at a property, and they only need like one night of charging. Um, it doesn't have to be the every night person filling up as well. The last two here is you're going to get a lot more first-time EV drivers. Someone might jump onto a, a rental site and say, wow, they have uh, like a Tesla that I can rent. I've never tried an electric vehicle. This might be a very low cost way to try out an electric vehicle for a night or two. They're gonna show up at your property and, and you know, or start searching for places with charging stations. And then you're also gonna have in hotel employees that will probably wanna fill up, um, vendors as well. So there's more and more options for this happening. There's gonna be uh, benefits of uh, EV charging, obviously, is that you get to compete against other destinations, you get to create loyal guests and get repeat customers coming back. Um, EV owners are also gonna, you know, not go to your website to see if you have a charging station, but they're gonna look on Google and different apps like PlugShare, SemiConnect, um, and they're gonna book more nights coming back into your property. I, humans are um, creatures of habit. Once they find a good situation, they're gonna come back more and more. It's going to boost corporate sustainability in your PR statement as well. 
you're going to enhance uh, with your curb appeal as well and just again generate more revenue they're going to be there spending their time money and all that and you can capitalize on that um, most electric vehicle owners will be able to charge at home this is true however they travel that's why they got they have that's why they have enough vehicle to begin with right so they're going to travel and charge up at work the mall, the stores, the restaurants, but they're also going to do road trips as well, too. That's that top part right there. That's where you folks come in. Without going into detail, I think you've seen this chart enough to go. It means something's happening that's on the up and up with electric vehicles. Um, you can Google this sort of information. It is out there. Um, it's no surprise electric vehicles are coming. Um, one general manager one time said, well, I don't even know if I have anybody driving an electric vehicle on our property. I walked out, I found eight electric vehicles in their property because other than these all being white in this picture here, um, I walked out there and I pointed out they don't look like electric vehicles. It's kind of hard to know that they're there, but they're there. And it's surprising to a lot of properties. Um, you can capitalize on that, right? And there's new models coming out as well I don't need to go through a list of this. I mean, honestly, I tell people, just go out and Google this after this event's over and, and see what's out there, see what's coming. You, you'll, you'll be shocked. Why do people drive electric vehicles? There's a cost savings. Um, you can save, it says one third of that of the price for you know driving an electric vehicle. I actually think it's more like around one sixth. Um, I'm actually on my fourth electric vehicle. The secret is don't buy electric vehicles, but to lease them, you want to buy mature technology, lease changing technology so you can trade it in and get a better product um, with the upgrades and everything else. That's another discussion. Uh, performance is fantastic. The torque right off the line is, is just, it just can't be beat. It's, it's amazing. Um, sustainability, you're going to create less pollution. Um, there's solar now. I, I've got a slide I should have thrown in here of a, of a solar canopy that is now being used to uh, charge up vehicles that you can get uh, and reduce dependence on, foreign, uh, or on fossil fuels. And then the battery technology is getting better too. The range of the vehicles is getting better. The cost of the vehicles are coming down. So there's a lot more coming for reasons of this. And one of the biggest questions I get a lot of times is, well, aren't all charging stations relatively the same? And that would be like saying, well, a flip up phone from a decade ago or more um, might be the same as a, a phone from years past versus the latest and greatest. There are differences in, ch in charging stations just as, just as there are differences in uh, phones. And so what EV owners are going to ask and expect is that you have the latest in technology and the latest in features. Um, if you cut corners cost-wise, they're going to know that. And they're going to say, yeah, you just put something in just to put something in as opposed to putting in something in that we as EV owners are looking for, such as wait lists um, to be able to see if the stations are in use, if they're available, things of that nature. So who is SemiConnect and what can we do? So we're a pioneer in electric vehicle charging stations. Um, I've been with the company for over 10 years now. So think back in 2012, there were hardly any electric vehicles. Well, our company was putting out charging stations. Um, we now have over 17,000 across North America. We have um, over 1 million charging sessions every year and over 150,000. And this right here, by the way, is an example of like what one of our charging stations looks like. Um, We've sold plenty of these. And just recently in the month of June, without going into great detail, we have been acquired by the company called Blink, which in short just means that the number two and number three provider of charging stations in the US and uh, North America have merged together to now put together a lot of great new solutions and there's a lot of information coming out about this. A quick snapshot of our customer base. Um, if you look in the, I guess to you, it would be almost the lower right corner is a hospitality group. We can make that group a lot bigger, but for the sake of one slide, um, this is just a snapshot of some of them. And this is a quick snapshot of our product line as well. Uh, what we see mostly for hospitality and fleet um, Valet would be the 7 Series or the 8 Series. The difference between the two primarily is that the 8 Series has a credit card reader in the sort of the lower portion of that model there. That's a great thing to have. We also offer DC fast charging. That one's kind of a case-by-case -case scenario on a property should you put in a DC fast charger. Honestly, if, if you're thinking a person might spend the night or spend multiple hours in your property, you don't really want to quickly charge them up because they're just going to have to come back out an hour later and unplug and move their car or something like that. If you put in 
a, a, a group of the seven or eight series, you can actually leave it there, let the person park and charge and spend the night, and they wake up in the morning with 250 miles of range. They're ready to go. Uh, some of the features we have here, just as a glance, are um, you have lighting on top of our stations, which changes colors to indicate whether or not the station is in use or not. Blue means that the station is available, ready to go. A flashing green light up there means the car is charging. A solid green light means it's fully charged. And a red light, when it comes up, means, hey, maybe something's out of order. Maybe there was a ground fault issue. Maybe there was a power outage and it just didn't come back on. It's just there's a lot of um, visual cues that you can see from even way across the room to know, hey, that car is fully charged. Maybe we want to talk to them about getting them to move. It's sleek. It's compact. It's easy to um, service and maintain as well. It uses uh, cloud-based technology through cellular. Uh, again, credit card reader is on some of our stations. And you as a property manager, I'm assuming many of you are, you will receive 95% of every dollar collected from the stations themselves. If you were to charge a dollar per hour, you're going to get 95 cents for every hour it's plugged in. Um, and you're in full control of the rates, who can use it, who can't use it. So it's, and guess what? It has an ROI model as well, which means that, you know, it, it could be in some properties two or three years before it's paid off, could take four or five years. But once you hit that point, just double the time and then you know that it will actually double your money and maybe even quicker as more electric vehicles come out. And we also offer turnkey or allow you and maybe even encourage you to just use your own favorite electrician to do the installation. So for station owners, uh, you also, like I mentioned, you get to control who can use the station, who can't use it, what price do you want to set. Maybe you want to set pricing for those who are spending the night at your property versus those who are traveling in just to visit a guest, something like that, or attend a, a conference. And then again, drivers have things where they can see if the stations are in use or not. Um, be put on a wait list to say, well, let me know when one of the stations becomes available so I don't have to keep coming out every hour to see if someone's moved. Um, just a lot of different things. Installation is easy. You would either use um, AC power of 40 amp breakers, 60 amp breakers, or 100 amp breakers. The more amps, the more power, the less time it takes to fill up the vehicle. Um, and just in short, it takes about 25, so for every one hour on your basic two pole 40 amp breaker, you get about 25 miles of driving distance. Doesn't seem like a lot. Well, if you leave your car there for 10 hours overnight, that's 250 miles of range. That's the way an EV owner thinks, as we think, park it, move it in the morning, we're ready to go. So, and we can help out with uh, assisting on any plans for installation. So as a quick recap, um, it's great for business, group, leisure travelers that need EV charging stations. If you don't wish to put a charging station in, okay, that's an audience you're gonna be missing out on. Um, if you put it in, it'll help, obviously. Um, you'll attract uh, loyal guests and increase your rev par as well. And so SemiConnect is here to have, um, happily help out, partner with you on your level two and DC fast charger needs. There's more I can go into, but um, please do. If you have anybody has questions, you can check us out on SemiConnect, LinkedIn. Any questions? How many people in here have charging stations at a property? You got one? You have them, great. How many people are thinking about putting in charging stations? Uh, I'm not persuasive enough. Okay. Well, if anybody has questions, do you have a question? Okay, no. Please let us know. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your time in San Diego.